We're joined now by Thane Rosenbaum. He's a distinguished professor at Turo College in New York City, also a Middle East expert. Thane, thank you so much for being here on the Chris Salcedo Show. Anytime, Chris. All right, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, he announced new tariffs today. Iranian medals and several high-ranking officials are going to be on this list as well. How much of an impact do you think this will make on, on top of the already tough sanctions the United States has in place? Well, Chris, you know, the other sanctions dealt with banking, shipping, and oil. Um, and this deals with manufacturing, construction, and more importantly, on those people who are involved in, again, the terror apparatus that is Iran, and specifically those people that are involved in their own internal national security. These are the people who kill and maim, injure, and imprison uh, Iranian protesters. So this is, creates a very different level of, of, of sanctions, uh, because it speaks much more directly not to the economic uh, condition of Iran, but the internal uh, stability of Tehran. And, and so uh, I think it's going to make a big difference. They've been squeezed in a way uh, that they weren't even before the sanctions were lifted. And the, they're going to have to make some decisions going forward. Uh, they either uh, modify their behavior, Chris, uh, mm -hmm. or they have to make some choices, because they, they're not going to be able to uh, support all these militia proxies around the Middle East, because we've basically bled them dry of funding to do so. You yeah, know, and that I actually made the point earlier on this week that uh, that the the Ayatollah probably did some math in the old checkbook yes. and made some calculations that if if Trump targeted those 52 sites, if they retaliated too strongly, they wouldn't be able to rebuild because all of the money the previous administration had arranged to be in their bank account was gone. Look, we've taken out the top terrorist in the world, uh, Qasem Soleimani, General Soleimani. How much of an impact do you think this has? On, on Iran's military capability, not only to export terror, but just basic military functions in their country. You know, Chris, I have always thought Iran was overrated as a military power. I've been saying this for years. You know, they fought uh, Afghan, they fought Iraq to a stalemate uh, for over 10 years <clears throat> in a war that they should have clearly won and didn't. Um, they're much better as mischief makers. Their promiscuous foreign policy <clears throat> in Yemen, Syria, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, <clears throat> they're like a street bully um, or school bully, Chris, mm. that doesn't want to get their shoes scuffed. They're very good at outfitting other proxy militias, but we're not really so sure that they would be, they would be able to stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Forget the United States. I think Israel would take them out in less than three weeks alone. <laughs> That's a, that, that's a great point. You know, and, and now there's a movement that, that shows the divisions in Iraq right now because you've got Sunni Shia Kurds, right? You've got the, the Sunnis who are more aligned with the Sunnis. I'm sorry, the Shia who are more aligned in the Shia in Iran. That's the majority in the country, right? And then, and, and then you've got the Sunnis and the Kurds. The Sunnis and the Kurds want to kick Iran out. <laughs> you've got the, the Shia that want to kick the United States out. Who's going to win this? Well, it's a good question. You know, when they voted recently their uh, parliament to expel the United States, you'll notice that none of the votes came from uh, uh, either th those either uh, Sunnis or, for that matter, Kurds. Yep. It was unanimous because they were all Shiites. Uh, look, I'm not so sure that Iran is welcome anywhere. Uh, the Lebanese are obviously sick of the fact that Iran has supported Hezbollah all of these years and has created a kind of state within a state. If you are just a regular person in Beirut, you're no fan of Iran. And you would say the same thing in Yemen. Again, these are mischief makers. And one would hope that—and that, that and look, what was Soleimani doing in Iraq? You know, he was only there <laughs> to help spread—he well, has no business business being there, which is why you correctly refer to him as the world's most notorious terrorist. He's only there to cause a problem. And whether he was planning something immediately or imminently against the United States, he was up to no good. He must, he, you know, he's in the terror business, Iran, uh, uh, Chris. Uh, he knows that there's a price on his head, dead or alive. And so uh, the wow. question is, will the Iraqis be able to take their country back from Iran? And the more yeah, we place that, that pressure a, on Iran, uh, the more of the chance that the Sunnis will reclaim control. That's huge. It is a huge question before us. Look, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation, Mr. Rosenbaum. You know, and it's it, just by everything you articulated right now about how Iran is viewed in the region, it's a wonder why CNN tried to portray Qasem and Soleimani as beloved in the region. It was a stretch. Sir, we'll talk again. Thank you so much for being here on the Chris Salcedo Show.